Hi again, it's Eileen for part two of my tools for the inner child kind of a video series as it appears to become, you know. Um, I found that I, so I was working on my crystals here. Sorry for the interruption. This is just going to be breezing on as we were doing. I found that these uh, Botswana agates, that's what I was talking about, actually do a lot more for me vibrationally. I looked up the uh, properties for this stone and it seems to me also like I get the most benefit or the clearest engagement with the crystal if I sit and hold the three of these in my hands like this and it just becomes a presence nearly you know like something is opening up something I'm shifting inside going from the mindset I was in towards something that is a bit more alive so I also have the sun coming out and it's uh, <laughs> shining on the floor and the floor shining to me so hence the weird light so yeah it's I'm just explaining. <laughs> um, for some reason, this is the most powerful. It's actually more powerful and more specific to connecting with the girl in the photograph than the rose quartz. So, but they go together really well, I think. Or I can wear them or use them uh, in, you know, by phases, one after the other. And the pink opal is part of the process in the sense that it is a lot more about breaking open parts of... It's a very vital stone. So even though these look a lot alike in terms of color, the effect is really very different. Is what I was coming out to say to you. So far, uh, the, the Botswana agates are a top favorite of mine and I will be shopping for more of these just for the heck of it. And I will, uh, you know, I want to be, now I want to have seven in each pocket <laughs> like that because it feels so good. It just feels, and it's, I'm something I'm, I'm often struck with is um, how sometimes the things we really need got away from us a long time ago and getting back to them is possible but it just takes time and you have to make an effort regularly and continuously and keep it up in order to uh, you know reclaim what you need or what you feel that you want if that's the case Whose life are you really living? And so on and so forth. You know, do you want to continue um, living a life that's not really yours? It's difficult. I'm not saying this is easy ever. So I think I'm really lucky, you know, getting to do this to this level at this stage. It's not bad at all. So I'm quite pleased with myself, actually, for also... Um, coming to realize the difference in nature between all the crystals and how I can use them and even talk about them so yay you know yay me yay us because without an audience what would be the point of all this so I suppose the other half of my operation here my inner child uh, retrieval operation would be my cards I'm thinking I'm looking around a bit other than the book and the you know all this stuff I um, am having pink moments <laughs> all the time. Think pink. Maybe that's a good title for this video. Um, been working on my Light of Mary Oracle cards yesterday again for the first time in an age because I was working on, just uh, in parentheses here, I was working on my husband's birthday present, um, which still isn't finished. I mean, because there's still much more to be done. But that took my focus away from the actual cards. So now I've got these two uh, parallel paths going on with these images that I've been, you know, photoshopping, manipulating on the computer. And then 
you know, making cards out of them and um, going forward one step at a time. Yesterday, I actually did something useful, which was to put a layer of, um, I think it's just an ultramarine, ultramarine, I should say, blue paint uh, layer over the sides of the, what was before really pale uh, blue paper around my images. I'll get back to them. I'll show you what I've been doing uh, as we progress with that. But it's another part that I've realized. And as I sit here and talk about my child things, you know, I've realized that there's actually a vibration to that project that is so important to me. And it just gets blown out the window because life will blow it out the window what with the weather we've been having it's been cold and windy and it's been snowing this morning i woke up to this much snow like what it's april this is supposed to be happening you know and uh, yeah last week or a week or so ago we were outside in a t-shirt and it was really spring like so that's a bit confusing and then again whenever the sun comes out the temperature goes up really quickly so that's kind of reassuring for me because I also have to deal with the weather. You know, there's all these things, there's all the issues going on at the same time. And I'm just trying to not overdo it with the therapeutic focus on all the things. And also trying to transform it all into something that will be workable or, you know, useful to other people, potentially, hopefully. Yeah, so sort of a check-in with all the things. I picked cards from my Mystic Masters tarot deck that I got in uh, at the beginning of this year. And I tried to do this by feel, really. I shuffled a couple of times. And then I went into the deck just by feel with this photograph of mine still in front of me. And I just picked out a number of, photo of, of cards, okay, to lay on the table face downward at that time. And um, just to see what would come out in terms of the energy that I share with this child still or whatever there would be in terms of a kind of a communication with this child. What would the child say to me if she could talk to me? What's she trying to tell me? Maybe that's more or less what it was really that came out in the cards. So what came out stunning you know i wasn't expecting this really uh is seven cards really and i'm going to lay them out like this because i have a couple more that i'm going to show you this is the mystic masters tarot that looks like this you can get this at um you can find the connections the information about this deck uh, on dannymystic.com that's what that looks like so if you are really interested in this deck, it's very pretty and I've enjoyed working with this um, a lot over the past months, I think, that I've had it now, two months or so. It feels like a lot more. Um, because it's my aesthetic, it's my vibe, it's very subtle. Uh, there's the, the drawings are all original artwork and they're great and it's just really beautiful. So what came out was seven cards, right? For, for this, what is the child trying to tell me? What is she trying to show me? What am I seeing in the photograph that I need to know about? Hmm? Something like that. Something along those lines. And I got two times three. So I got a queen of swords. And a seven of wands. And a hierophant. On the one side. On the other side, I got the Knight of Wands. You'll never be able to have a focus of this, but it's just an indication. Ace of Coins and a High Priestess. In the middle, I get a Seven of Coins. So I am kind of already going like, okay, so wow, this is uh, very symmetrical. I have a Seven in the middle. I have a seven on this side and an ace on the other. 
have a court card on both sides and I've got a major card on both sides. So it's very, to me, this became immediately obvious to me that I'm talking about my parents again. That my card or my photograph of my child is talking about this is my world. This is the world I was living in at the time. I'm not kidding, you know, I'm not even, <laughs> there's not, there's no space for me other than what was happening between the priest and the priestess. I mean, seriously. So if that was how I, at the time, saw my parents, then it makes quite a bit of sense for these two court cards to represent how they saw me. My father saw me as a queen of swords in terms of capacity, which is true. He, he, he saw me as somebody who could deal with anything, really. Um, intelligent, you know, not to be pushed under the rug, no problem at all. Even though he tries to do that, because things, you know. My mother saw me as a knight of wands, someone who's always about and always... You know, very positive and very active and so on and so forth. I'm looking at the two minor cards. So the Ace of Pence and the Seven of Wands. As like a chemistry card between us. Where uh, this is a card of struggle. This is my mother giving birth to me, basically. So she gave me a body. She gave me a body to do my life in. And for my dad, my dad was less connected to me physically, directly, but he was um, showing me this. This is the, or this is the inheritance I got from be, from both of them, from either of them, in terms of, in terms of chemistry, really. So I find it pretty fascinating that the card I end up with in the middle is the seven of coins. And this is where I go to my trusted, uh, completely different book. <laughs> there is no book for the Mystic Masters Tarot. And stingy as I am, I would probably not have gotten the book because I've got this now. And just looking it up in here, looking up the Seven of Pentacles, I get uh, this analysis for, of course, the, uh, you know, Seven um, seven of coins in the Marseille tarot and it says here acceptance the practical aspect of the coins subdues the dynamic three to the stability of the four with the number seven depicted as an inverse triangle pointing down at a rectangle so going like this in the middle down to the fours the single coin finds its place between the three pairs who, well-positioned, but not overly dominant. The plant decorations enclose it in a way that express protection and support. So I suppose I was safe, even though I didn't feel safe, ever. The inverse reading, I'm just skipping the interpretation here. The inverse, so if you have the card, if you were to have the card reversed, like so, um, it says excess excessive dependence on external support. Constant need to be accepted and approved by others. Which is what you have when you're four years old, right? So it's always important, I feel, to read the reversed meanings. Because it's to me, it's not so much a matter of the card going this way or this way. Because I don't use reversals myself. But I will always sort of factor in the potential for on the dark side, if possible, to... Um, to the situation. So I thought that was really helpful because the three I would tend to equate with my mother even, the four with my father, it's just how that feels to me. And there's me in the middle and I was an only child, so there it goes. I felt this intuitive card picking just came out beautifully with exactly what I needed to uh, to realize as a communication from this old photograph, from this old me over there. I didn't stop there because I felt like I wanted a few more cards and I went ahead and into the, you know, just by feel, picking cards that feel like they're trying, like 
like there's warmth there's more energy to with some cards than with others for some reason and i end up having a pile of cards and then just putting several of them back again into the into the deck and i at the end i have a few cards you know this is a very intuitive way of pulling cards without any spread questions without you're just having a you're just having a mindset that you're trying to investigate which is probably what more people will do with cards so i have uh three more sun justice and page of coins which of course links up with uh my seven over there so maybe I should be looking at my page of coins as a significator card in my, you know, future readings and things. Because for a change, I'm investigating different significator cards. Which is a card that you pick in the deck that represents yourself. So if you're, you know, you can work with that different ways. Um, these are really hopeful to me, both Justice and Sun. I always feel like, okay, so this is the present day situation, those three. And as a final thought, I have another Wheel of Fortune, which kind of ties in with the whole, you know, lots of changes, lots of drama. And by now, I suppose the conclusion from this whole spread and this whole situation here in front of me, for me would be like, okay, so I've got the information, I've got the um, the processes that I needed to go through are complete or at least well underway to such an extent that I really don't have to worry anymore about what is, um, you know, whether as long as I have acceptance, which is what this Wheel of Fortune also stands for for me. It's like you just have to roll with the punches. And by now, of course, a part of me wishes I were still, uh, I could go back to being four years old and do it all over again. And it would be a really bad idea <laughs> because I wouldn't be any better at resolving issues. And uh, because it was, a, it was just a really tough, um, it was a tough, situation that I grew up in and on the other hand I think I turned a lot of it into uh, something positive in the end which is nice to be able to conclude that I mean the sun card is always very lucky the justice card I feel like it's like the there's a to me there's like a sense of balance um, even between the justice and the wheel of fortune where there's a part of you that has to surrender and accept what's been going on and just go with the flow and accept that tomorrow's another day and there's other things going to be thrown at you but the justice card means that you're on the right track for yourself and you the sun card would mean to me that i have help which is true i'm not alone i don't have to do this alone anymore and i can trust and be confident that things are going to be Okay, for the page of coins, you know, things like that. So a really consistent, to me, helpful and consistent and supportive type reading. And that happens more often these days. So I can just plunge in and use whatever feels right. And, um, and it's helpful. And it's, I find this to, you know, be pleasant. I had been working with my crystals before doing the cards. I've been reading in my old little book. So it's like, da, 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 you know, everything, one thing at a time, like a waltz. <laughs> and then at some point, ploof, here we are. And I make another video about things. So I hope this is of, um, you know, of interest. Maybe it's an inspiring way to work with cards. To uh, I would love to hear from anybody. Um, what do you use for reconnecting? You know, with yourself, with your true nature, and how does that work for you? And is that something that you can describe or that you have tools for? So, 
here goes thank you for watching i think that's another 20 minutes <laughs> i don't know where time goes i swear i don't know this is where time goes Vrr, into the spinning wheel thank you for watching and see you next time okay bye for now